Uh, to conclude this, this session, head of the Atomic Energy uh, Commission in India, but, but more than that, he has unique uh, and important experience in the, the management and governance of global research infrastructures. Uh, most recently, he has served as chair of the council of the, the ITER project. And we have also in the SKA family benefited from Arun's experience and contributions now over many, many years. So um, I would like to invite Dr. Sirastava to provide us with insight in how uh, India as an important partner uh, approaches the SKA project. Arun, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, well I'm, I'm here to share with you the big signs and its importance uh, for India. And uh, this particular view graph which you are seeing is uh, a pictorial view in which uh, we had made it recently to show how India is participating in different type of uh, big science projects and what are the areas uh, which they are exploring. So you can see from uh, the 10 to the power of uh, minus 43 seconds onwards where INO project is there. Then uh, you have a CERN project which is uh, exploring between uh, 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds from being signed high energy particle reactions. Then you have uh, a few minutes later, the first nucleus where the FAIR project is, uh, we are members of that. Then comes PSK, which is the formation of first stars. Uh, then the TMT project where uh, structures of early universe would be identified, which is in few millions from the Big Bang. Then we have an ITER project where uh, the thermonuclear fusion reaction happening which is around 1 billion years from Big Bang. Then uh, the LIGO project, which is few billion years, black holes and uh, merging stars. And uh, thereafter, uh, the two days time frame. So there's a big time frame which we are covering and that is justifies as to uh, what are the, uh, why are India participating in such big uh, mega science project as we call. Uh, just to um, um, remind all of you that this is just a graphical representation and the key factors or the key objective of each of the projects are only depicted over here, while uh, many of the projects have an overlapping uh, areas. So uh, this is just uh, now we can go uh, one by one to other project. Uh, one more thing that I would definitely like to say, the, all these projects where uh, India is participating, they are co-funded by Department of Atomic Energy as well as Department of Science and Technology. These are the two major uh, science uh, supporting uh, ministries in the uh, country. Okay, Simon, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, okay. Now, uh, participation in square kilometer array. I think uh, India has a history of participating in radio astronomy right from uh, 1960s. And uh, our uh, National Center for Radio Astronomy, the nodal organization, who is working on behalf of DA uh, for this SKA project. And the SK consortium coordinates uh, the Indian activities, which already has more than 20 organizations, which are highly uh, involved in the scientific works. There are several universities and thereby a lot of college students who are a part of the uh, project. And we do have a very good industry participation model, which has been worked out. It is not only for the project right now, but for the future as well. And uh, the science goals are listed over there. I need not speak, uh, especially in front of the community who is thick and thin on the SK project. So uh, Simon, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, some of the potential benefits that we talk about is uh, you're getting an access to the uh, radio astronomy and observatory in the future, which is the best, uh, which is, uh, will be uh, when the, it is fully constructed. And uh, we will have a dedicated uh, SK regional center in India, which will enhance science returns. 
and uh, definitely help a lot of uh, the research institutions in the India, students and other scientists to uh, work on uh, the data that will come from uh, the SK Observatory. Then this will also help in growth of international collaboration and participation for Indian scientists. Uh, leadership role India is already having in terms of the telescope manager and associated software for management of complex systems. For example, core areas of research and uh, interest for uh, industry as well. On the technological objectives and benefits, we can see that there is a direct benefit to Indian industry as well as uh, for in-house R&D programs. And uh, there are a lot of uh, areas where uh, India is already participating. And most importantly, which you will observe uh, while participating in all the big science projects, the primary objective is to develop the human capital, increase the uh, number of uh, people who could participate in such science project, and definitely the industrial development. Um, uh, sometime back you heard about the DARA program, uh, the South Africa. Can I have the next slide, please? Right now, uh, this picture I have deliberately picked up that because India is already having a Gantt meter uh, wave uh, telescope, GMRT, which actually helped in tracking the European Space Agency space mission probe as it lands on Mars. If you uh, look into the uh, black uh, side uh, on the top right, you can see the time from where the parachute got uh, opened and the acceleration started and the last deceleration all being recorded through uh, GMRT. And of course, on the left side, you can see the pictorial view of how things are happening. So India does has a large of, uh, uh, set of people who are working on this uh, radio tsunami uh, projects. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, this is uh, 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 my favorite project, my love, so if I am allowed to use the word, uh, because I have virtually grown with this project from 2006 onwards. Uh, this is a, a a project which is being built for the first time in the world, uh, other than what was built earlier with, with uh, they were very small tokamaks demonstrating part of the fusion. This is one step before the demo um, fusion reactor would come up. So it's demonstrating the feasibility of fusion energy. And uh, we have partners uh, with China, European Union, Japan, Korea, Russian Federation, and USA. So in, in fact, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to say that the existing members of the SKA, uh, we are partnering with them in several other projects as well. So we have a very good uh, harmonious relationship uh, in the scientific end endeavors all throughout and working very coherently in all these projects. So uh, can I have the next slide, Sami? Okay, now uh, this slide I basically wanted to show that how India it is helping. Uh, we already have a tokamak called Aditya. We already have a tokamak called SST1, Superconducting Tokamak 1. Then we are participating in ITER, as you can see on the right side. The fusion R&D activities are already happening in preparation for the ITER project. And then uh, you can see we will move towards, as a part of next step, towards demo. So this is a very clear timeline that has already been drawn. Uh, so the success of ITER would be very important in moving uh, to the demo for India. And uh, this particular project is helping India in develop, uh, getting knowledge and developing industrial base for many of the areas. And uh, can I have the next slide, please? The best part of this particular project is you get the knowledge benefit. What it means is you pay only 9% of the cost and you get 100% of the IP for all the projects. I think this is something which I have been talking in board and uh, other CPTF meetings, uh, that this is uh, the model which is actually ideal so that you uh, share everything that everybody um, pulls in for a particular project. 
Okay, then the it definitely provides a learning experience to industry, and here also, like many other um, big science project, uh, the seventy percent of the contribution is in terms of in kind. It's only the thirty percent that goes as cash, and I think most of the projects have developed this type of model where seventy thirty is the generally acceptable uh, norm. Uh, for uh, the projects then you have of course uh, the scientific manpower then uh, this particular thing as i was telling in the previous slide uh, the r and d activities has happened and which has helped us in creating a lot of test facilities for various loops working for these projects and these would definitely going to help us in uh, moving towards our demo project uh, can i have the next slide please Okay, now this is uh, another project which is an India-based neutrino observatory which is coming in India itself. Uh, this project was sanctioned uh, quite some time back. Uh, the prototyping and other activities are already going on. There is a mini iCal uh, calorimeter color, color which is already made, working, and a lot of uh, PhD works are going on on this. however the main project is yet to start because it has some uh, environmental issues for which it is stuck up but uh, this is likely to start up uh, very quickly so what is uh, uh, good about it okay once we are the project taking it would be open for other countries to join hands in i know whoever has an interest so this would uh, currently being an only india project would be open up for a uh, intergovernmental or inter institutional uh, project can we move to the next slide please i mean yeah so uh, coming on this there is a physics capability study the vehicle detector was already completed r and d related to them was already done engineering challenges uh, is basically the building of cavern which is uh, almost about 2 and a half kilometer deep inside uh, the ground and you have to carry tons of uh, iron uh, inside assemble them so this is a big uh, challenge and uh, we are working very hard on that uh, we don't see any show stoppers on that and uh, one good part of this particular this is uh, we, well before the project started uh, almost about 10 years back we started working uh, on getting the uh, manpower development and we started an ino graduate school we are uh, in the 12th year now and more than 30 scholars have uh, completed their phd's and they are employed gainfully within the country and some of them are outside the country as well Uh, can i have the next slide please amit right good this is another project uh, facility for anti proton ion research accelerator this is coming up in germany and as you can see on the left side the list of countries who are part of uh, this program right now and uh, the sketch over here shows uh, the uh, accelerator how it is going to come up and uh, you can see the indian flags uh, are the areas where india is going to be contributing in kind for uh, this particular project um, in this particular project india's contribution is again a fixed which is a 3% of the cost uh, which is on a 22005 cost basis and here also you can see it is 25% cash and 75% in kind so this is the formula as i said earlier which is being used for most of the india's participation in mega science project can i have the next slide please okay this uh, uh, gives you the areas in which fair project works right from uh, the atom stage the nuclear stage and then to the particle uh, stage so the three areas you have virtually three different accelerators over there and where which you can uh, do the experiment for um, uh, various material testing and uh, other things like that can we go to the next slide please yeah this is uh, again just to demonstrate that uh, how many people are working from 50 countries are participating in this project 
thus obviously this gives us a benefit in uh, our yeah. scientist to uh, be uh, learning from the experiences of so many people expertise from other people so this is one of the uh, the thing and in this particular project uh, india has a third largest contribution among the nine countries so uh, we are a very good, uh, founding partners in this project as well and uh, there are several components which have already been made in india and uh, one of them is the power converters which uh, there are about 700 numbers which are required and we have supplied more than half of it even today while the civil works are still going on uh, in the project so i mean can i have the next slide please yeah this is the uh, potential benefits again as you see the human capital development and technology development are two main pillars and uh, the technology that would be uh, helpful in developing are listed over here can we move to the next slide please simon okay this is uh, son i think uh, almost everybody knows about uh, this particular project india is uh, become an associate member in 2016 and has been participating in uh, to, sorry 2017 and has been participating basically in uh, compact muon solenoid and a large ion collider experiment uh, the basic uh, things where we have been working on the detector development and the grid computing which is again uh, mining of the uh, big data that we talked uh, sometime back and uh, of course development of accelerator technology which are as well useful for our department in various um, experiment that we have been doing it can i have the next slide please yeah so uh, as can be seen over here india right from the beginning when the cern was formed was invited to participate in the construction and commissioning as such so this shows our can um, Sure. or participation in this project for several uh, years and uh, so we, i can in fact say india has been part of the journey of accelerator science for almost three decades now and uh, currently india has a significant contribution in alice and cms experiment at the lhc several indian universities institutes are uh, members of either uh, cms or alice or both and so there is a large number of human um, capital development which is happening can we go to the next slide please right this is a, a project uh, which is uh, coming up in india this is in collaboration with uh, us uh, us already has uh, two ligo laboratories one is at uh, livingston and the other one is at hanford and uh, the third one is coming in india if you go to the next slide i can just uh, share why if you look into this the two uh, uh, ligo labs uh, which are there can uh, will cover a larger area but not the sharper part but if you have the third lac like ligo india coming from the different uh, part of the uh, globe it uh, there's a small uh, circle you would see that is the sharpness with which it can focus and uh, detect the gravitational waves coming out of various uh, collision can we go to the next slide please okay here uh, as i said since we are um, participating with us uh, um, who have already built two this is the third one more or less identical to that but uh, we are developing a little advance uh every particular technology is being developed in india the full exploitation of gravitational observatory as integral part of multi messenger astronomy this is one of the objectives and benefits that we have then uh, strategic india as i said uh, indian geographical and demographic advantage because of which uh, the uh, combined effect of the three uh, ligos would give you much better result more confirmed results okay uh, it it definitely provides uh, like all other project uh, opportunities for uh, students to uh, undergraduate postgraduate studies and part of the uh, ligo science uh, collaboration can we go to the next slide please 
Yeah, this is a, a 30 meter telescope. This is an optical uh, project, optical astronomy project, where uh, we are using the uh, lenses basically. It's a large aperture of 30 meter. That's how the 30 meter uh, image comes. This is coming up at Mauna Kea in Hawaii, though there is some issues with respect to the site, uh, but uh, they seems to be getting over now. And uh, here uh, we are participating at about 10%. So here also, again, in terms of the fixed amount that we are participating, we have created a coordination uh, center, which does all the coordination work with the uh, other countries as well as work in India. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, this is uh, another uh, project which is actually in India. I just wanted to share it with you uh, called Grapes Muon Telescope, which is in Uti. And uh, somewhere in uh, 2015, it uh, detected a super solar storm, which may cause dangerous current in power line, destroying transformers, plugging, uh, plunging world into darkness for years. This was first detected in this Muon Telescope at Uti which is all these are made uh, indigenously in India and these have been there for a long time. And uh, it is claimed that this is world's best uh, muon telescope. So uh, this India's discovery that I was talking about has captured worldwide attention and over 500 uh, electronic and print media reported in 48 countries in 27 different languages, which means almost about covering 90% of the world population. So it was one of the major discoveries that we were captured by this. Can I go to the next slide, please? Yes, the uh, Mays telescope is again a major atmospheric Krayenko experiment. This is a, a telescope that has been made for detection of gamma rays. This is already in operational from 2016 and is uh, being operated remotely from uh, Mumbai. It's giving very good data and uh, we are in the process of analyzing and coming out with, uh, there are several papers which have already been published based on the analysis of the data that have been, was collected in this. Uh, can I go to the next slide please? Okay, now uh, this is something which I, when I showed you the first view graph, which is uh, capturing all the projects at one go, that is the one which was made when we uh, put up uh, this uh, Vigyan Samagam, which is actually a uh, moving uh, science exhibition, basically meant only for the mega science project that we just uh, discussed. And it had a focus uh, on uh, the students, academia and industry, and to ensure a cross fertilization happening between the different projects. And uh, I don't hesitate to claim that this is its first of the kind in the world where on a single platform, all major projects were displayed. Up till now, all these projects have been displaying uh, what they have uh, individually. <coughs> and it had a large uh, um, uh, footfall. Uh, 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 just at the metros, it had almost about 0.65 million. Uh, viewers who had come to see this. And we had uh, a lot of luminaries who had come to India and for participating, you, you the DG Sun was there, Fair, DG SK himself, Phil himself was there. Uh, a large number of uh, participants from uh, the accelerator group of Sun, uh, virtually on every project they were there. Then uh, from the eater for every uh, uh, city, they one or the other were there for uh, delivering a lecture and sharing uh, the experience. So this was a very huge success. And uh, just to share with you that we are continuing with this. This was 11 month long uh, journey, which uh, we could sustain very well. And currently our uh, host uh, center who were hosting this exhibition have uh, decided to continue with this exhibition and take it to the second level of cities in the country. So that uh, we are, you know, a large number of group of people can be reached because of this. Can I add the next slide, please? Yeah, 
Now, uh, before I close, while we talk very nice about all these big projects, it's great achievement for scientists, engineers as well, technologists, students. But there are some challenges which uh, all these big science projects have. Uh, the biggest one is the resource, which is uh, because each of these projects require a high financial commitment and uh, it's seamless flow during the execution of the project. Otherwise, even if one member does not pay uh, uh, or contribute financially into the project, then uh, the chances of the particular project slipping uh, becomes very high. So uh, getting uh, financial commitment and resources from the government is not uh, so very easy, but then yes, uh, we have been lucky to move from one to the other. Maybe sometime we are not in a position to play in that year, but subsequent year, but without much of an uh, earn. Then the uh, uncertainties which are associated with all these projects. The uncertainty in terms of there could be side related issues like for our TMT project is having, uh, there could be some uh, legal issues which could, uh, uh, you know, so this leads to time and cost overrun. And especially when there are multiple partners, like all these projects have what eight to 10 uh, uh, member countries who are there, uh, there could be an issue which could lead to time and cost overrun. So this is one of the uncertainty which is related with all these. And the industry related is, uh, there is a limited industrial base in high tech area. So uh, what it requires is need to have a considerable upfront R&D investment, especially by the private industries. Otherwise it so happened that you are making only one uh, particular piece for a particular project and thereafter there are no particular orders to the company. So the company is not ready to invest in R&D. So this becomes one of the bigger challenges. Uh, and uh, we could sustain it only when involving uh, grant companies who are in India to uh, hold on and uh, carry the financial burden of uh, investing in R&D. And of course, uh, manpower to bring engineering manpower in bigger numbers uh, to grow inside participating Indian scientist community is again a challenge. And if you would have seen in all the projects that I spoke about, human building human capital is one of the major things uh, which is there and we are uh, actively participating in uh, all these projects so that uh, enough experience engineers as well as the scientists we have and uh, another thing that is uh, the leveraging spin-off technologies now whenever uh, any country invest uh, in the mega science project which are very uh, financially heavy uh, projects if i'm allowed to use the word the government uh, looks into what is that is coming out for the society. Science is just one part of it. The coming out of the spin out, which could be used for the common people is what the uh, government and uh, people actually you look for because you are using public money. Now this converting the science data into technology and then bringing a product which is affordable to the larger population is again a big challenge. And uh, we are working on that, uh, successful in some areas, not so very successful, but not lost the hope and moving forward. And uh, that's, these are some of the challenges I thought I should share with all of you, because all of you are part and parcel of the various mega science projects. This is our experience with respect to participation. Can I have the next slide? I think that's it. Yeah, thank you very much for listening and I'm open for questions. Thank <laughs> you.